So hi everyone. Uh, nice to be back at uh, Ron's uh, uh, Ron's uh, events. So thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Bala. I'm a cloud solutions architect. I also play the chief architect role in Microsoft for our region. Um, most of my day job is there, like Ron said, digital transformation with our customers on the entirety of AI. I concentrate a lot more on uh, the business practical applications and what you can do with AI as well. Um, most of my time. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. Um, can you all see my screen? Not the... yeah. Yes, it's all good with the Microsoft Copilot. Perfect. So I'm going to start with this. So uh, for those of you who are thinking of AI, um, as you know, this is completely real now. Um, and this is uh, uh, in, in within like, 12, within less than 12 months, uh, this is the stack of products that we infuse AI on. So you can see the scale of how AI is getting infused, especially um, I've been in AI for about more than 10 years or so, but all this time it was a very specific domain, uh, very specific use cases. But now in the recent days, uh, as you can see, like AI has become, with the Gen AI, it has become a revolution. So we are expecting this to be like a, a mobile revolution or a web revolution and things like that. It will be very similar like that. Um, yeah, I mean, Ron already touched touched upon the GPT-40. It's going to be another game changer as well. That being said, uh, Microsoft is not new to AI. Uh, you can see um, the few set of products that we have. Hopefully you all can see it. Um, it's very hard for me to count these days because Everywhere we do, we touch, um, there is some sort of AI uh, infused in it. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat. So today I'm going to talk more about, I'll give some introduction on the open AI side, but I'm going to go talk more about the data privacy, security, and how we are doing it in this Gen AI world. Um, and pretty much we also follow that to the, uh, the AI side as well. So you will hear about responsible AI practices and we'll talk about that. Um, by any means, if you want more information, please reach out to Ron and he knows where to catch hold of me um, or uh, reach out to your own Microsoft contacts if you have. So OpenAI, probably you have heard this, it's nothing new to you. We have a partnership, uh, it's been a while, but uh, as the partnership is growing, as we invest more and more, uh, they, are you, they are building the supercomputers in Azure and they're not only using it, um, we are also, getting the models that are developed by OpenAI and we are making it commercially available with uh, security in mind. As you know, our CEO, uh, our company is very security oriented. So uh, we have a secure uh, 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 security initiative as first principle to do anything that we are going to touch. Uh, we have been, so we are going to continue that for the longer time. So we have released the GPT-40 in preview. We have Azure, Azure AI Studio. There is assistance. We have introduced talk or uh, uh, chat with your own data. That is something made very easy for end users to just to connect to an, um, uh, our AI search and just implement RAG without writing too much code. And obviously we have Whisper, DALI 3 is there. Um, so, so do we have like uh, embedding model for small and large as well. Those are all available. Uh, this partnership is growing and it eventually grow. Just to give you an idea, if for those who don't know what Microsoft is about, um, uh, especially on the AI side, a uh, lot of people think that we are very new. We are not. Um, we have a footprint from right from if you want to build your own AI to all the way up to consuming AI that are already pre-built. Uh, especially this customizable AI models, uh, and the ML platform Azure Machine Learning is our tool that we build AI on. And customizable AI is where our open AI services also falls in play, which means it allows you to build applications by using this API. So given, you might ask why, because most companies are very much focused on buy. Um, uh, buy will come over the period of time, like how we have co-pilots of products, you will start seeing the entire industry will come out with their own AI. But what will happen is it will be within their own, own tools. So now the question will be like, how do you build your own AI 
within the uh, within your company specific all the tools bringing data from different places and how to build it those all will become challenging so that's why we are exposing this into that world so you can build your own custom copilots um we do have other ai services i'm not going to drain the slide this is i'm not going to marketing slide so i'm not going to give you that uh if you want more information please do let us know um, here is what i wanted to touch upon um Microsoft has been very keen on this since the beginning. Um, we don't have a public version of the API, API that you can actually put some information into it and we take it and give it to OpenAI or anything like that. Every data that you're using is secured within the customer's domain and tenant because we wanted to make sure that we provide you the uh, trust and safety safety net to make sure that, okay, uh, your data is only yours, nobody else gets to use it. Even Microsoft doesn't not touch or take it and use it. We only uh, monitor metrics like the performance of the services and things like that. That has nothing of your data. It just to give us uh, insights into like how well the systems are doing, where we can go improve the performance of the latency. You pro if you're using OpenAI and any other LLMs, you probably would have seen latency is good when you don't have traffic, but when you have traffic, latency goes under the tubes. Um, applies to, I, I'm seeing applies to most most of the use cases that I'm seeing. Um, so we protect your data, your data is yours. Even in fine tuning, you will be uploading it into a Microsoft managed uh, key. So it's not that, that uh, the data is taken and given it to anybody else. Keep that in mind. Um, you can go back and delete the data, no problem. Um, this is just the data that is going into the model. The model is always, uh, uh, we use HTTPS, so it's always encrypted when it goes in and comes out. Inside the model, the model does not understand encryption yet, so it has to be plain language, whatever you're sending in. Uh, if you're sending in any PII stuff, please um, make sure that you do some um, safeguarding before to mask that and send in the information. Now, this is something very, very, very interesting because uh, this does not only apply to Gen AI. This applies to everything that we do inside Microsoft. And we have this documented in our website as well. So uh, if you want, let me know. I'll give you an, uh, the entire strategy. I can send you the pages and pages for us to read, uh, read through. Um, there are a few things very interesting here. Look at the accountability, transparency, uh, fairness and reliability. Um, privacy and security is, of course, it is going to be there, and inclusiveness is another one. Now, e these are all very high level. It's very questionable when it comes to individual things that what you can do, but there are certain things you can take care of, like accountability. Uh, if you can, inclusiveness, you can. Uh, security and privacy, reliability and transparency. Uh, fairness depends on the data, how you have collected, because most of the uh, systems, IT systems that collect data has some bias in it because they only collect the way that how they wanted to collect. Um, so it's not, I mean, that is questionable as well, but that doesn't mean um, you guys have to um, uh, um, worry about that. You can actually take it and reduce the data set and see how fairness it can be. But as a general principle, uh, these are the principles that we follow, and we are building tools for that. Um, we have a responsible AI framework for machine learning, for AI. Now we are also building it for Gen AI as well. Keep that in mind. Gen AI is uh, go growing, so we are going to introduce new and new and new things. So you might ask me, like, okay, what are the stuff that we are going to uh, infuse um, all these responsible AI and governance on? So... Our Azure OpenAI is the service that is going to encompass all our OpenAI model. Um, and we have very uh, few areas that we touch on, like deploy, talk to your own data. We have a compute called provisional throughput units. And we are going to infuse uh, responsibleness in assistance and functions as well. This is one area that we are going to uh, infuse. Now, not only that, most of our cognitive services and OpenAI goes through these compliance. So you know we um, we cover uh, X number of countries. I don't even, I lost uh, track of uh, how many countries we, we even cover these days. 
um, that are also uh, like GDPR and CCPA for uh, California. And there are other uh, uh, HIPAA rules are coming. I mean, HIPAA has always been there. There are other states uh, coming up with their own uh, own uh, way of protecting AI, plus the countries are coming out as well. So we are going to, uh, we will enforce and we will make sure that um, we are providing you all those. Um, not only that, uh, we are also going to be providing like um, uh, um, government clouds. We have government clouds if you want. You can actually go and uh, use the government clouds for certain workloads. Uh, we have US government. We are also going to, they're probably building government clouds for other countries as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, and our regions is always growing. Now there is certain uniqueness that we have that I want you all to uh, keep an eye on. This is specifically for the genome. Uh, since it's a language model, um, it can create content. And that means it can be, uh, sometimes it is good, sometimes it is bad. Um, but there is also a lot of bias in this thing um, because certain things that might be good for me may not be good for for you all. So keep keep that in mind, but that doesn't mean it stops us, but there are certain areas that we are gonna uh, put very concentrative is like the hate speech, the sexuals and self-harm, violence, these type of language that the content going in and the content coming out. Uh, we have developed content safety AI services, which adds on on top of OpenAI. OpenAI will also incorporate some of these. We, uh, we will add a layer on top of it. So when you come to Azure, um, yes, it will be a little bit slower, but you get this added advantage of safeguarding yourself. Um, we will filter it out. We will send it out. Uh, this is something very, very brand new in Gen AI, uh, especially it applies to text, uh, images, and soon audio will also follow the same practice. Uh, this is something by default when you use our Azure Open AI uh, will come uh, as a default if you want to get rid of it. It's our duty to, there is also a process for that also. But I duly say like, please do follow this. Um, now, there are there is some uh, uh, actions that you can take if you want to disable those content filtering. There is an opt out uh, feature. Uh, you can uh, um, we, uh, fill in a form and it takes a couple of days for our CELA team to uh, look at your use cases and then give you exceptions. If not, we are going to keep this just to safeguard your customers, you and also Microsoft. Um, OpenAI, um, in, with, with respect to the intellectual properties, uh, keep in mind, this is going to be something any data, any content that is generated from the model is your content. Uh, Microsoft does not own any relationship or even so does uh, um, OpenAI doesn't have, uh, they don't claim either. Uh, when you're doing fine tuning, there is a concept of fine tuning, which um, there is a small segment of customers who are using it. Not necessarily you have to fine tune for every single use cases um, because fine tuning is not an easy uh, easy task. It's an expensive and it's a time consuming task. But we have we have provided if you can create the data set, there is easy way to upload the data set and fine tune. And since you are uploading your data, we provide you a ma Microsoft managed encrypted storage. Um, you will have full control of your data. We don't take anything out of it. You develop the model and you deploy the model. It will be a copy of your uh, deployment, which is running in an isolated uh, area in your own tenant, just to make sure that nobody else is touching the uh, touching it. So we protect that as well. Um, we do allow you to bring, uh, in some cases, um, you can bring your own uh, customer encryption key for the storage. And you can also, you, if you're using like the SDK based approach, you can use the um, storage keys and all in key vaults and protect it for yourself as well. That is also possible in our, uh, our thing. Now, um, there are some SLAs that we provide, it's usually 99.9, um, but that doesn't mean uh, you can add your own uh, HR, HADR, uh, you can do load balancing and split between different regions. Uh, not only for token limitations, but you can also use this as an approach to um, fault tolerance uh, in a in a high uh, high uh, high availability fashion. We also providing monitoring tools so you can collect all the information in a centralized log analytics or Azure monitor and build your own dashboards to make sure that 
you can monitor uh, like the 429s retries and uh, costing and usage and stuff like that. Now, security is an another concern. So we uh, provide uh, most of our services. If you look at it, we have a concept called private endpoint. Um, you can put it in your own uh, VNet, which is in your extension of your uh, private uh, networking that you have for corporations, and um, and re reduce the traffic only through certain uh, IP ranges or your your firewalls and routers. Um, we also have our back capability. That means like you can specify who can just consume the service. You can go create deployments. Um, we we provide you key based authentication, but we also provide you uh, Entra, which is our Azure AD. Old old uh, old name is Azure AD. The new name is Entra. Uh, that is also is available with managed identity, system identities, and stuff like that. Um, virtual networks, keep in mind, you do need, this is an uh, architecture diagram, how you can set that up. Uh, there is a private DNS zone that is very important. Make sure that you have that so that the services communicate with each other pretty well. Uh, not only that, we don't stop with that. We also have a lot more practices, what you can put in, uh, what as a, as an organization, what you guys can leverage and put in place to make it much uh, safer and efficient way of governing the entire AI footprint. Um, for example, like you know, performance efficiency. How can you test it and uh, do load testing before you deploy to production to know that okay, it's doing the right thing. In Gen AI, you can add the evaluation also as an additional step. Make sure that it is providing the right output. So that you are, you can actually make sure that okay you're safe. Um, operational excellence. Uh, AI doesn't give you everything. You, with AI, you're going to build applications. So that means other services will also be uh, put together. So you should be able to monitor and and you know make sure that all the systems are working very well. Uh, you want a reliability. You want it. I'm sure um, your customers are demanding some uptimes, recovery. You need to put HA, DR and also uh, um, manage and monitor, test it, and make sure everything is good. Security is one key aspect, like um, make sure you have uh, RBACs for resources specific, but then data specific also. Um, you have to um, implement like a uh, role base, like a, a who can have uh, what access, um, which are dependent on the so AI services that we are going to use. So for example, in a, if you use our AI search, there is a, um, you can filter your uh, rows and uh, by AD groups uh, as a separate property, and in that way you can say like, okay, Ron has only this access, Bala has only this access type thing, so that nobody gets uh, in a multi-tenant model it work. And obviously, cost optimization. Um, you have to watch this cost. It's it. And this is for every application. You guys have to watch the cost. You want it to be very efficient in terms of uh, what you're using and um, if you want more help, let us know. We can actually guide you um, how to set this up uh, and how to monitor and all those things. Uh, that being said, here are some of the links. I know uh, Ron will be able to share um, uh, the PowerPoint with you with the links. Um, take a look at it. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, thoughts, uh, send it to us. And that being said, um, since since it got released, I will give you a quick uh, tour of our new GPT uh, model that we released. Um, uh, so, so this is the uh, factory that I'm sitting right now, um, which is part of the, our going to be our co co innovation lab. So I can ask the model, can you um, describe the line components and safety systems available. Uh, bear with me, this is real time. If it didn't work, I apologize up in advance. Um, so this is the model that we just released yesterday. Um, it's basically uh, text. Um, you can also send in audio and you can also send in uh, uh, images and ask the model to understand and, and reason with it. And it does a great and amazing job. Not it's not available in all regions yet, um, but uh, keep an eye out. Uh, you will start seeing this soon. And that's all I had. Any questions?